By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today it is Tuesday, so that means another match for you from the Raging Bull series, the old school tournament held in Amsterdam, but of course now held completely online for this 2021 edition and we have reached the quarter finals and in the quarter finals we're going to look at ola who is playing with let me have a look who's playing with a nether void deck really cool deck i mean looking forward to do the deck deck on this one and he's playing against bob who's also playing a beautiful deck a mono blue deck and it's really it's a stunner. I really love your deck, Bob, and I'm looking forward to take a closer look at it in the deck deck section. Now, before we go there, I would just like to point out that if you'd like to go straight to the matches, so if you'd like to skip the deck decks, you can do that by going to the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there. That will take you straight to the action. And also in the description, you can find more information about the rule set about the Raging Bull Tournament. So if you want to know more about all that stuff, check the description below because all that information is there. Okay, and here we are going to continue with the deck deck and I'm going to start with the deck of Ola. Let's take a look. And here we see the deck of Ola. And first off, Ola, beautiful deck picture, man. It's really nice. And as you can see, those cards there in the middle, the Nether Void, that's really the card to talk about when we're looking at this deck. So it's one black and three to cast for an enchant world from Legends. And what it reads is all spells cast are countered unless their caster pays an additional three. So it's simply going to make it a lot more difficult for you to play your spells and to kind of follow your normal uh, your normal plan of casting your spells. And of course, when you're the one playing with Nether Void, you have ways to work around that extra tax of three. And we can see what Ola is doing here with his deck. He, he's having access to a lot, a lot of mana sources. We see the full power nine, right? So that means all the Moxen, the Black Lotus, but also Soul Ring and four Lanamer Elves. So he's got a lot of ramp. On top of that ramp, he's playing with pretty cheap creatures. He's playing with Argovian Pixies. He's playing with uh, Serena Pefrites. He's of course playing with Mishra's Factories who don't really mind that tax. And then he's also playing with two Ice Storms himself to make it harder for his opponent to kind of get to the amount of lands. And with those Nether Voids and with those cheap creature spells and those ramp spells, he's also playing with just the usual very strong power cards, right? We're seeing the blue power. We're seeing the two, I, I always call them the two black power cards, right? Demonic Tutor, Mind Twist. We're seeing the regrowth to get those power cards back. We're seeing um, actually a single... Uh, counterspell which is mana drain and mana drain actually works extra good in a nether void deck right because it gives you mana so it's even more devastating for the opponent the opponent has to tap out completely because of nether void to just i don't know cast some kind of three three or two two creature and then on top of that you're going to pu punish him for that by playing a mana drain and then the next turn you have all the mana to your disposal to for example play a horrible mind twist like that would be kind of a horror scenario for the opponent of Oli here for Bob who's playing against him but Bob is playing with blue by the way so maybe he can counter his way out of it but um yeah really beautiful deck and we also see the sideboard there that's upside down under the deck photo we do see two city in the bottles so that could be interesting so there could be a scenario where Ola kind of board uh, boards out his own surrender Pefrites or maybe does something else and then boards in his city in a bottle I wonder if we're going to see that in game number two and three in this matchup because I believe that uh, the opponent today Bob is playing with uh, with some uh, Arabian Knights himself so that that could be an interesting thing to kind of keep a look at a look at um, I think this is a very difficult and annoying deck to play against. If Ola can just uh, get a Nether Void out quite early, this could be really tricky and really a hard one uh, to win. I'm not surprised to find this deck uh, in the uh, in the quarterfinals. Okay, so this is the deck of Ola. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Bob. And here we see the mono blue deck of Bob. And wow, man, you really brought a cool deck to the tournament. I so respect decks like this. And uh, I'm just happy to see that you've made it to the quarterfinals. That's really cool. And let me just explain what I like so much about this deck. Uh, that's It's just the fact that Bob has made a few different choices. So he's going mono blue, right? My starting point with mono blue, because I guess I'm just not that original, is I start with four counter spells. Now check out this list. 
there are no counter spells. And I kind of like that. I like it when players make a different decision and try out other cards because it's just interesting to see these other cards in action. And some of those other cards or uh, for example, the four Phantom Monsters. Phantom Monster, a beautiful creature, a 3-3 flyer for four, which is actually not that bad, but of course you just have better alternatives, usually in old school, but maybe you don't, because I mean, Bob, you've made it to the quarterfinals, so you must be doing something right. Looking at his creature base, by the way, we almost only see flyers and a lot of creatures. So we see eight, 12, 15, 18 creatures in this deck, and only three of those creatures don't fly, those are the three Triskelions. And I think in a blue deck, that kind of makes sense because Triskelion is basically direct damage and it can help you maybe, you know, deal some final points of damage, but also get rid of some creatures, which can be quite difficult in blue. Talking about that, he's also playing with three Psyblasts, probably for that same reason. Now, those cards are in the bottom because I'm saying he's playing with, um, with 18 creatures. That's actually not true. He's playing with 20 creatures because he's also playing with two Sage of Letnams and Sage of Latinam is just such a cool little creature. One blue and one to cast for a 1-2 creature. And you can tap it to sacrifice an artifact. And then you get to draw a card. So that works kind of nice with the Triskelion. And it also works really nice in response to your opponent. Let's say your opponent wants to kill one of your, your one of your artifacts. And you've got your Sage on the board. And you can say, okay, I'm just going to... You know, in, in this case, like Ola is playing with Crumble, right? So let's say Ola wants to crumble Amishra's factory when, when Bob attacks with his factory. He can then use his Sage of Latinam to sack the factory to the sage and draw a card and that way get card advantage because Ola then has lost uh, a crumble and uh, of course uh, Bob has lost one of his artifacts but he gets to draw a card in in, uh, in return for that so he's actually up one card so that's kind of neat so I'm looking forward to see the sage of Latinam in action another card I'm really looking forward to and that's a card you don't see often is telekinesis so telekinesis I actually don't own this card. I don't see this card often. I love the art by Daniel Gallen. It's an instant for two blue. And of course you're thinking, hey, two blue, why not play Counterspell? I love the fact you're not playing Counterspell, but you're playing this card. I think it's really cool. So Telekinesis, what does it do? It's from Legends. Of course, all these cool cards are from Legends. It's an instant and it reads, and I'm just gonna read the current Oracle text, so not the text on the card itself. It reads, tap target creature, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt by that creature this turn it doesn't untap during its controller's next two untap steps. So basically what you do is the opponent wants to declare attackers. In response, you can cast telekinesis to tap it down. Or you can say, you know what, you're just going to attack and then you can cast telekinesis. But the bottom line is after you've used the telekinesis, your opponent will have to go through two entire turns, two entire untap steps before it's actually going to untap. So telekinesis is a really good card and the reason it doesn't see a lot of play is pretty obvious right it's too blue and you can do other things for two blue and blue but it doesn't mean it's a bad card so i love it i love the fact that it's in your deck bob and i'm really looking forward to see it in action and then in the sideboard we see some timmies we see protocol sorcerers and i think in this matchup maybe the timmy is going to see the light of day because uh, you know, Ola is playing with those Lanawar Elves and those Lanawar Elves will help him to ramp up. So maybe it could be worth uh, Bob's while to actually cast a Timmy to kind of try to ping down those Lanawars. So there's a lot here in this deck that I'm looking forward to see. There's a lot in Ola's deck that I'm looking forward to see. So um, let's go and, uh, and see it. Let's go to the match. Game number one, and as you can see, it's Ola at the top and Bob at the bottom. And um, just to give you some info, this game isn't fast forward. Usually the games on Timmy Talks are fast forward at times two, um, just so the games go a little bit more, you know, quicker. But in this case, I haven't done it. Why? Because Ola uh, loves to put his own face on his stream, which is definitely cool. Ola, no worries about that. Um, but if I would then fast forward at times two, it kind of looks like Ola is head banging all the time. So I didn't want to do that uh, to Ola. Uh, but let's look at the action here. We see Ola starting off with the Library of Alexandria. That's going to be tough for Bob to deal with because he is playing Mono Blue. So I don't think there are any easy ways, like no Stone Rains, Ice Storms, or cards like that in the deck of Bob. Bob, of course, playing Blue. So it's going to be tough for him to get rid of. Uh, of that library but let's look at this oh it seems like he's getting off the lower plan here already because he drew card number eight with the library and oh this makes sense ancestral recall okay i was looking at it. i was counting in my head i'm like why is he playing out this many permanents with the library here 
but he had the ancestral recall. What an insane start by Ola. This is really sick. I mean, Bob, you need a miracle to get back from this already. Or maybe if Ola only draws lands. There is a time walk. Okay, that's a good start. Kind of getting some advantage back here. Power against power here in this quarterfinal match. There's a Tolaria and tapping three. Do we see? Yep, Serendip Afrit, the three, four flyer. So putting some pressure on Ola here. And important enough for Bob, he's able to get the Serendip out before we see any nether voids by Ola. Because that is what he wants to do. Doesn't have any black mana, by the way, to cast a nether void. Playing a Mishra's Factory. His screen is a little glitchy. And using the Library of Alexandria to draw an extra card. Playing Argovian Pixies. So that means that if Bob decides to swing in and doesn't play out another creature, then Ola can swing back for three. There is a Soul Ring. And a little smile from Ola who passes turn. And Bob drawing card for turn here. Let's see what he can do. Going to take a damage, of course, going down to 19. I'm expecting him just to swing in here. I mean, uh, Surrender Buffree doesn't like to be on blocking duty. There we go. Attacking here for three. And that means that Ola is going to drop to 17. Tapping three. Another Surrender. So he keeps putting on the pressure here. And now, of course, Ola cannot attack because of that surrender as a blocker on the side of Bob. So this is a pretty good turn for Bob. Let's see if Ola can do something against the surrenders. First using the library, of course, to draw an extra card. And I mean, Ola is still a heavy favorite after the library of Alexandria and after that ancestral recall. He's got so much card advantage. He should win this game. There is a maze of if. That's what you don't want to see if you're playing with Serendips. The only upside here for Bob is that he can attack with two and Ola will probably send one back and then he still has a blocker. So that's not too bad. Using the Mox Emerald here to animate. So he's going to attack with everything, I guess. Or maybe not the Lanawer. Yes, he's keeping the Lanawer at bay. They're kind of showing Bob that uh, Ola probably has a Giant Grove or is pretending to have a Giant Grove. So now Bob has to make a choice. I think he's just going to let it go here. He's still on 19, like he can take 4 damage. If he blocks, he's, he's taken the risk, you know. If Ola has a Giant Growth, that means he loses a creature and also loses his ability to deal damage to Ola because Ola has that Maze of If as well, so he needs 2 creatures. Of course, I don't know what's in Bob's hand and that pay, plays a big role in his decision making. I think that he's just going to take the damage. And it looks like that's what's going to happen because he's going to the keyboard and he's taking the damage. So he's going down to 15. And then, of course, next turn taking two damage from his surrenders. And there we see a surrender of free to buy Ola, which is also a great card for him because now he can block both surrenders, maze one, block the other on a surrender. And it's looking bad here for Bob. I think what he needs is maybe another blue and control magic. Telekinesis could be one. Oh, Ancestral Recall. That's definitely going to help. Going to draw three cards here. Maybe this will uh, get Bob back into the game. We see Ola laughing here a little bit. Probably thinking, okay, I had an Ancestral. You have an Ancestral. It kind of makes sense. And uh, I'm expecting at least a land drop here. He's been stuck on three lands for a while now. And he's got quite a lot of uh, four and five drops in his deck. Tapping an Island. What is he going to do? Playing a Soul Ring is that it? That wouldn't be great for Bob because he's on thirteen, and then he's going to take two more next turn. Let's see what he can do. Tapping two, playing a Felwer Stone, and that Felwer Stone actually is not going to make any mana because uh, his opponent Ola doesn't have any. Um, Oh, he's actually destroying the Felwer Stone. That's an interesting choice because, I mean, Ola only has colorless mana and that means that the Felwer Stone doesn't work. And uh, that's some extra life gain here for Bob because of that crumble. So he's going back up to 14. That's kind of a surprise that he uses that crumble against the Felwer Stone. I wonder why. 
Probably going to use the library again to draw a card. Going through his cards first, trying to decide what to do. And just passing turn here. Okay, this is quite interesting. Not attacking. Although that makes sense, why would he attack? It's not the most ideal. And there we see another crumble on the soul ring. Probably in the upkeep of Bob's turn. And they're kind of talking about the life totals. I think he should have gotten an extra life for the Felber Stone and now a life for the Soul Ring. I think it was on 13, so then he should go up. He's also taking damage, by the way, from the Surrender of Freaks, of course. So I guess he's now ending up on 14. I'm sure that makes sense. You can see that players communicate. That's always the best way to kind of figure things out. And if you both agree, you know, that's fine. He's got three untapped blue. He's pretty stuck at the moment. Will we now see a telekinesis? Another Felwer Stone. It's not really going to help him passing turn. It looks like both players are a little bit stuck, but that's good news for Ola. And Ola taking a damage now going down to 15 because of his Surrendip. Passing turn, and there we see Bob going down to 12. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of the Surrendips killing their owners at the moment and not much else happening. Interesting board states. There's a Mox Jet. Now at least Bob has some mana. He could play, for example, a Phantom Monsters, playing with a full playset in his main 60. And okay, there we see an Azur Drake, also playing with a one off of that, also playing with two ghost ships. So the Azur Drake, a legendary a creature from a Legends, not a legendary creature, but a creature from Legends, and it's a 2 4 flyer. One blue and three to cast. Passing turn to Ola, who's now using his Loa again. So he's back up to seven. Now he's on eight. And that library has been doing a lot of work. And I'm actually surprised that Ola is not able to take more advantage out of his library plan. Playing an underground C. Tapping two. Playing a Chaos Orb. Okay, that's kind of interesting. And now that Underground Sea is also activating the Felwer Stone of Bob, by the way. Tapping the Mox to activate the Chaos Orb. Not sure what he's going to use it on. Probably the Azur Drake. And he's going to flip. And it's a hit. Nice flip. Azur Drake is a goner. Good flip in by Ola, really took his time, stood up, you know, I think that's important. Usually in this tournament, sometimes you can get a little bit um, easy going, especially when you're playing online and uh, from home. And you kind of flip without really uh, giving it the, uh, the attention that it needs. And, and, and you tend to miss, a lot of players actually miss flips on, on tournaments. And Bob, it looks like he's going to just pass turn. He's now on 10 already. I mean, those Surrender Pafrits are really a problem for Bob. He needs to get rid of the Surrender of Ola, and even if he does, if he goes all out attacking, he does open himself up to a Counter-Strike from Ola. Looks like he's kind of counting himself, going through his hand, thinking about what to do. Tapping four, there's a Phantom Monster. The problem of the Phantom Monster is that it can get killed by that Surrender of Freed on the side of Ola. It is a beautiful, beautiful creature, by the way. It's really nice to see it in a tournament like this. So thank you for bringing it with, Bob. And tapping his library, that's Ola. Getting another card from that library. That Loa is doing so much work in this match. Going to eight. What can he do here? He's got all the cards. Maybe he doesn't want to do anything. I mean, it's kind of a stalemate scenario right now, which is fine for Ola because Bob has that double surrender that's slowly killing him. But he's going to play something, tapping his both of his mocks in here. Playing a time walk. Not the most ideal scenario for your time walk. You really would hope that your time walk would do a little bit more than just giving you an extra draw step. I guess with the Loa, it means it gives you two extra cards instead of one. 
But still, you're of course hoping to maybe be able to attack twice, for example, deal some extra combat damage. But it's not meant to be using the Loa again, so going back to eight. So much card advantage with that Library of Alexandria. And now he's playing a Strip Mine. Bob, of course, is really hoping for his Strip Mine to get rid of that Library of Alexandria. Using the Strip Mine on one of the islands. Going through his hand. What can he really do here? Tapping his Mock Sapphire. And playing out an Unsummon. Okay, so finally he's kind of finding an opening. This is interesting. Unsummoning the Phantom Monster. Probably because it's the only creature that's not dealing damage. And I'm actually expecting him now to play out uh, one of his nether voids, to kind of making it harder for Bob to play out his creatures. Looks like he's just untapping again. Mm, yeah, he's tapping now. Okay, is he going to play out a nether void? There is a nether void. We were waiting for that, Aula. Nether void on the table. That means it's going to be impossible right now for Bob to play out his phantom monster so nether void is working in a way that it makes um, each spell that a player wants to cast more expensive you have to pay an extra three mana to cast w whatever spell you want to cast which is a big problem for bob because he's stuck with those two surrenders on the board and he wants to make a change here he's got five mana now at least with that land drop but that means that he can just play a Sage of Letnam and that's it, right? Because he's got to play that extra tax because of the Nether Void. This is really bad news. And Bob's saying, you know what? That Nether Void is the nail in the coffin. You got this one, man. And uh, what, an, what an odd little first game, I have to say. Because uh, both players were kind of stuck. And, and I, I understand Ola. Ola was like, you know what? I've got, you know, I've got those two Serendips on the side of my opponent and he's basically killing himself so a standstill is not too bad but it just very slowly Bob kind of bled uh, to, to his own death here and uh, yeah the nether void was the nail in the coffin so both players are now going to go into their sideboards I wonder if we're going to see that uh, protocol sorcerer coming in from the sideboard of Bob I really do hope so and then uh, we are going to catch up with these players in game number two Game number two, here we go. Bob's on the play after losing that first game to Ola. And uh, let's see what Bob can do. It looks like Ola, you're taking a mulligan. So he's going down to six, putting that card on the bottom of the library. And it's a go. Bob starting with a Black Lotus. Cracking the Lotus. There's a surrender for free. This is a good start by Bob here in game number two. Let's see what can he do. And Ola looking, I do see he has a Surrender as well, if you look closely, playing a Tropical Island and passing turn, so it doesn't have the explosive opener that, uh, that Bob just had. And what is he going to do? Unsummon? Oh, there's an Unsummon by Ola, and that's a great response. So Bob first taking the damage, and then Ola playing the Unsummon. That's unfortunate, and there's a Felwer Stone for Bob. That means that next turn, at least, he can play the Surrender Perfeet again. There's a Mox Jet by Ola. And there's a Mistress Factory tapping three. And there's his own Surrender Perfreed. So this has really been a Surrender Perfreed battle for so far. And I wonder if Bob has put in his City in the Bottles from his sideboard. Or actually Ola is the one who played with the Cities in the sideboard. I don't think, I don't think Ola will actually. Because he's got enough weapons against the Surrenders. And he won the first game basically because of the Surrenders of Bob. And now Bob, of course, playing out his own. So he's got a blocker for the Surrender Befreeds of Ola. And Ola now taking a damage from his Surrender, going down to 19. And these, these creatures just play a huge part in, the, in this matchup so far. There's another Mistress Factory, 4 mana now. So Ola could play a Nether Void if he has the card in hand, of course. Doesn't seem to have it playing Argovian Pixies, the 2-1 creature. That doesn't take any damage from artifacts. And that's the interesting thing about Argovian Pixies. Because of the popularity of Mistress Factories, Argovian Pixies became more popular as well. Even more popular than, than the Elvish Archer, which has the same casting cost and is a 2-1 First Striker. 
Let's take a look. What can Bob do? Maybe playing... Oh, a Brain Geyser. Not too bad because he seems to be stuck on land again. So playing a Brain Geyser for two. Hopefully he can find some mana. He's playing with Air Elementals. You know, he's playing with a lot of Flyers. And he, do, he does need, to, need his lands to kind of be able to cast those. Playing an Island and then passing turn to Ola. Ola going through his hand. Taking the damage, I guess, still from the Surrender. Would drop to 18. I think he's forgetting it. Tapping two here. Mox Jet and a Tropical Island. Playing another Argovian Pixies. Attacking here. So I'm just expecting a block. And I wonder what Ola can have. Why he's doing this. He's blocking. Because he doesn't have a green open. So there's no possible Giant Grove bluff. We see Bob here taking the damage from his Surrender. Going to 18. I think Ola should be on 18 as well. But maybe I'm missing something here. Looks like Ola is also changing his total now. Yeah, also to 18. Okay, now we're now we're back. Now it's all set. What can Bob do? He's got five mana, so I mean an air elemental would be really nice. Interestingly enough, here, uh Ola has kind of opened the gates here for Bob to attack. And of course he's doing that because he's got that uh, double pixies and the two Mishra's factories and his own Serendip. Ooh, Bob again playing a Serendip of Freak. Remember game one when the Serendips killed him? And playing a Sage of Letnam for a moment there, I thought it would be uh, it would be a time walk. Interestingly enough, Bob is not attacking here. I would have considered actually attacking with the three because you still have your Surrender to block and then you can attack with one Surrender, but at least deal three damage to Ola. And Ola dropping to 17 because of his own Surrender, playing another land. Looks like he's passing turn here. Untapped by Bob, taking two damage, going to go down to 16. Let's hope that he remembers. It's easy to forget something in these games. Tapping three. Playing a Cyblast, probably on the Surrender, right? Exactly. So Bob now taking two from the Cyblast and two from the uh, Surrender Perfeet. He would drop to 14, exactly. So he's on 14. Now he can swing in, but he probably doesn't want to attack with both Surrenders, but at least with one. Oh, he is attacking with both. Going full force. So that means Ola is going to drop to 11 here unless he's got something. And he, Oh, a time walk. This is great magic from Bob. Well-timed time walk here. Going to untap, taking two more damage from his Surrender. He's going to 12, but then he has another combat step. He can deal another six, and then Ola will drop down to five. Well-timed time walk here by Bob. Does this mean that he's going to take... Game number two. He's not there yet, though. He's on 12 now. If he attacks, he opens himself up. But, of course, he has to. Gonna attack with both. Ola's gonna go to five. If Bob can now just play out a flyer, just something to block all those attackers with. Playing a Felwer Stone first. Tapping two more. Playing a Sage of Latinam. He could, of course, possibly jump with one Sage. He can, uh, he can block one of the Argovian Pixies. That's actually not such a bad trade. He could also consider sacking one of his artifacts for an extra card. Because it looks like he's got enough mana, so maybe he can like sack a Felber Stone, for example. So in theory, he could block with the Sage of Latinum on a Pixies and then use the Sage ability. So here we go. Let's let's see what, what they're gonna do. So Ola attacking with everything, and that makes sense, of course. So two two twos and two two ones, those are Govian Pixies. I'm I'm kind of expecting at least one of the Sages to block one of the Pixies. Maybe he has a telekinesis in hand. That could be another option as well for, for Bob here. That would be really well timed. Looks like he's going to block with both of the sages. In that case, I would personally block both of the Argovian pixies and just take the four. Of course, you could also consider double blocking one of the factories because the factories can only kill one of the sages. And he's not tapping the sages to destroy a flower stone i would have considered doing that but of course i don't know what's in the hand of bob and maybe bob really needs his mana time walk okay wow and i guess now bob's really happy that he blocked at least two that he's still on eight so a time walk by Ola now and it's really nice to see both players drawing into their power and using their power kind of making this into a balanced game 
Ola looking at, at his cards. I mean, he can swing in for four, and then Bob's going to go to four, and he takes two damage from the Surrenders. He's on two. So if he can find a way to deal two extra damage, he's actually there. So he's closer to winning this than you might think. Two cards in hand. Attacking for two here. Interesting that he's only attacking for two. Pumping it up to three. That means he's going to go to five. Ooh, does it mean he's got a psionic blast? Does Ola have a psionic blast here? Tapping three, a surrender per free. Oh, this is turning out to be a really, really interesting match. Ola is completely back into this. Bob is untapping, taking two damage, going to three. He needs a little miracle here. He, if he can just get rid of the surrender, attacking with both. He's got to block one, right? And then... Oh, he's going to win this one. Because the surrender for free is going to put Ola on two. And then he plays his Triskelion. And he can use the counters to deal the final two points of damage to Ola. What a game number two. Gentlemen, thank you. I love this magic, man. This is great. And Bob, well played. But also to Ola, man. You've done everything you could in game number two. And the good news is we're going to game three. Game number three, the decider here in the quarterfinals of the Raging Bull series. Who's going to advance to the semi-finals? Ola starting with a Tropical Island and a Mox Pearl. That's a pretty good start for your decisive game. Oh, he's not done yet. Okay, Black Lotus. Is he going to play Nether Void turn one? That would be funny. Maybe Lunarwer Elves and Nether Void turn one? He's cracking the Lotus. Oh, wow, Time Twister, what an opener for Ola. This is just sick. I mean, if you're Bob, there's absolutely nothing you can do. Even before his turn starts, we can see that he's already behind. Wow, because now basically Ola is ahead to two cards that you see on the board, Tropical Island and the Mox Pearl, because he's going to draw a fresh seven again. These are just your broken old school openings, right? You only see that in this format. Where you can just play with the power. There are no cards that are, uh, that are banned in old school. Well, except for the anti cards, because we're not playing for anti anymore. There are cards that are restricted, obviously. The power nine, you know, um, is restricted for obvious reasons. And there both players go and, uh, and shuffle up. Putting everything in three piles again. Putting everything together again. And uh, let's take a look. The nice thing about old school is even though it's like a quarterfinal of one of the bigger tournaments, you know, the players are still really, really relaxed. Um, and that's always kind of the vibe that I get when I play old school. It's a very welcoming and friendly atmosphere. And uh, let's see Oli here playing his Mox Ruby. Wow, it's still his game turn one. This is just insane. Okay, for a moment there, I thought he was going to cast a time walk. Luckily for Bob, he is not. He's playing an Argovian Pixies. It's just insane. Such a good start here for Ola. Let's see what, what Bob can do. Playing a basic island. Finding a mox of his own. Playing a flower stone. That's actually not too shabby. This is a pretty good opener. Not as good as Ola's, of course, but it's not too bad either. Ramping a little bit, and then next turn he can start casting some of his flyers. There, tapping four. There's the Nether Void. Oh, this could be this could be a big, a big uh, could have a big influence on the game. Nether Void, of course, meaning that Bob will now have to pay three extra for everything that he wants to cast. Same thing goes for Ola, but Ola already has some mana, or, or already has a creature on the board. So it doesn't hurt him as much as it does Bob. And all Bob now can do is just pass turn. He can only cast something of, of one with the mana that he has because of the extra task from Nether Void. Attacking for two here. So Bob's going to drop to 16. And he's also playing a Mistress Factory. So he can swing in for four next turn. Uh, can he at least find another land? I hope so. Okay, that's something. Finding, a, finding an island. Going through, even even casting a Mox now with Nether Void means you have to pay three. 
It's such a killer card. I'm expecting him to swing in now for four. That's exactly what he does. So that means Bob's going to drop to 12. Looks like he's going to do something. Tapping everything. Are we finally going to see the telekinesis? Yeah, telekinesis power. Love it, man. It's so cool to see the telekinesis in action. And he's going to play it on, uh, interesting, on the Mishra's Factory. So you see the dice there on the Mishra's Factory indicating that it will take two untapped steps before he can untap the Mishra's Factory. Uh, it's just great to see a telekinesis. That means only two damage for Bob. So he's going to drop to 14 instead of 12. And playing an island here. And what is he going to do? I mean, he's got to pay the three extra, so there's not much. Okay, so he's going to cast something for one, I guess. I still wonder if he boarded into Timmy. That would be really helpful now, getting rid of that Argovian Pixies. And he can actually cast it now with the mana that, that he has available. I mean, Nether Void is just such a sick card. I mean, instead of casting a Maamoti Jin, you now only have mana enough to cast a Protocol Sorcerer. I mean, that's, that's huge. That has a huge impact on the game. And Bob tapping now. And there is a Chaos Orb. I wonder if he's going to flip... On the Nether Void, if he is going to flip on the Nether Void, that kind of shows how annoying it is for him. It's hard now to see how many cards Bob has in hand, by the way. I believe two or maybe three. Really hard to see. And he's passing turn, so he's not using the Chaos Orb. Interesting. I mean, I wonder if he would have had a big flyer in hand, he probably would have used the Chaos Orb, or he's waiting until the end step of Ola to use the Chaos Orb. That's another option. Then, of course, the risk is that Ola can draw into uh, one of his crumbles. First, he's going to attack for two, so Bob's going to drop to 12. What else is going to happen here? And end step, we see activation of the Chaos Orb. Does Ola have a crumble? I don't think so. No, he doesn't have a crumble or else he would have used it in response to the activation. There's the flip and it's a hit. It's a little bit bumpy though, but it's a hit. Nether Void is out of the game. A nice weapon against Nether Void actually is um, uh, play, just casting another Enchant World. But Bob doesn't have any in his main board or sideboard. But that's always worth considering uh, when you're playing, for example, Mono Blue, because it's hard for you to get rid of enchantments. Some players do it, you know, to, to get rid of a Nether Void or an Abyss. They just put an extra enchant world in their sideboard. It's an option. But now it's gone anyway, and he can start casting some of his flyers again. There we see a Surrendip of Freak, the 3 4 powerhouse. We, now, we have now seen the Surrendip in all three games, and another Surrendip of Freak. Wow! Bob is the Surrendip Man. Each game he's been able to cast two of them. Let's see what Ola can do. Is he going to play Unsummon? So he's going to cast an Unsummon on one of those. That's not too bad for, for Bob because he can still just uh, use one of them to block. And now the Mishra's Factory is going to untap. Although, I th is that true? Is it already untapping? Shouldn't first the counter be gone? And then, yeah, exactly. It stays tapped and then next turn it's going to untap. I'm already happy because I saw telekinesis in the game. So, you know, that makes me happy. Bob dropping to 11. And now it's going to be difficult for Bob. It really depends if he has another creature in hand to play as a blocker. He's going to swing in, I think. So he's going to swing for three. So old is going to drop to 17. I'm now expecting him to play out another flyer, hoping on an air elemental, one of my favorite creatures in blue. And, okay, playing another cool creature here, Phantom Monster. A beta Phantom Monster. 3-3 three, three Flyer. And that will do the work fine, because it can block and kill both of Ola's creatures. So Ola needs to find a way to get rid of the Phantom Monster. 
And he's gonna take his turn, untap everything. Now finally the Mistress Factory untaps. And this is just not an ideal situation for Ola. If he's gonna attack, okay, playing another unsummon. That's not too shabby. Phantom Monster back to hand of Bob. He can now swing in for four and that makes a huge difference. That means that Bob's gonna drop to six here if he doesn't have anything against the combat damage. So he's gonna drop actually to seven and then to six because of the Surrender Pafrit. And he's probably just gonna attack and uh, play the Phantom Monster again. So let's, uh, let's see what Bob's gonna do. Is he gonna replay the Phantom Monster? He is of course on, on, on six. And Ole is on 17. That's that's a big problem for Bobby. His life total is so low already. He doesn't have any life gain in his deck, I think. He's looking at his hand. And he's attacking for three here. So that's kind of the the, the, the part that that still makes sense. Then he's tapping four and there's the Phantom Monster again. Okay, so this is kind of going the way I anticipated it. Also means that he doesn't have much else going on in his hand, I guess, or does he? Maybe a time walk now? Take an extra turn? Okay, no, it's a Felwer Stone. And passing turn here. Let's see what Ola can do. I mean, he needs to do something against the Flying Army, playing out another Mishra's Factory. And he's looking a little bit concerned, probably thinking, uh-oh, am I going to take more damage next turn? Then again, Bob cannot just attack with all his creatures. He needs to make sure he's got some blockers. Attacking with the Mistress Factory, turning it into a 3-3, so kind of saying to Bob, you know, I'm willing to trade this one. And Bob says, okay, I'm just too low on life to let this pass. So he's going to block the Factory. Both creatures are going to die in this exchange. And now Bob's going to take a damage from his own Surrender, going to drop to 5. And again, those Surrenders are kind of making it difficult for, for Bob. On one hand, they've been very powerful for him this match, you know. Being able to put pressure on Ola, on the other hand, they're kind of this 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 problem for Bob as well because they're slowly killing him. And Bob, of course, cannot attack unless he's got another creature in hand that he can play out to block the Argovian Pixies and the Mishra's Factory with. I think if he's going to attack, that kind of indicates that he's going to play a creature second main. I mean, he's on five. He wouldn't attack if he doesn't have a blocker. Bob's doing some counting. You could put Ola on 11. That's still pretty high. Tapping four. Playing a Nevenerals disc. Ooh, this is interesting. In that case, he's going to keep his Surrender untapped, of course, passing turn. Wow, that is interesting. The next turn, he can possibly attack with the Surrender, pass turn to Ola, and then when Ola animates his Mishra's Factory, in response, he can use the Nevenerals Disc. Or Ola can say, you know what, you've got the Nevenerals Disc. I'm just going to attack with both of my creatures, at least deal two more damage to you, that he's going to drop down to three. That's another scenario. Interesting, interesting uh, situation here. It looks like he's going to use the Mox Pearl to animate the Mishra's Factory, attacking here with both. And that is kind of showing that he's willing to sacrifice one of his creatures to deal an extra two damage because that disc is now on the table anyway. So we see Bob here blocking the Mishra's Factory probably. 
Exactly, because that's now still a creature. So Mistress Factory goes. Bob takes two damage. Going to go to three. And then next turn he's going to take a damage. Going to go down to two. Okay, we see all the tapping four here. One red and three green. And oh, there's a Stormbind. I'm sorry, Stormseeker, of course. Oh, Stormseeker. That is it. That is a classy way to finish the game, Ola, man. And that's that's really Ola style. He always plays with these cards. Oh, look at that hand. He had a side blast that he couldn't really use. And he had a Brain Geyser in hand. That Brain Geyser, wow. If he could have used the Nevenerals disc, blow up the board, and then played a Brain Geyser to kind of draw into new stuff, you know, I mean, he actually could have still won the game. Wow, wow, wow. This is something. This has been a really, really exciting quarterfinal match, and I'm really looking forward to the semifinals and the finals. Talking about those matches, uh, you can see them right here on Timmy Talks next week, Tuesday, and the following Tuesday. So if you're enjoying the Raging Bull Series tournament reports here on Timmy Talks, you know, stick around, subscribe if you're not a sub yet. Uh, talking about all that, you can also help the channel grow. So if you enjoy the content uh, that I make, you can click on the like button, you can leave a comment, all that helps. And of course, subscribing helps as well. Another thing that you can do is you can join the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And uh, there's probably a link popping up right now. If you click on that link, uh, you can uh, join Timmy Talks on Patreon and you can support the channel financially. It already starts with $1 a month. So please consider supporting me. I would really appreciate it. And uh, one of the perks is your name will um, will appear in the end scroll. How cool is that? Talking about the end scroll, let's take a look at our fantastic, our amazing, our wonderful channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? 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 Ik het als fik het als somba kazik.